I think that digital assets have increased popularity these days because they bring a significant uh, improvement to the market when it comes to liquidity. We know real estate is a fairly illiquid asset class. It's hard to trade hands, or at least it's hard to trade hands on a frequent basis, meaning that the investments are mostly locked up for a longer time. By creating a digital asset and by fractionalizing real estate assets, we see enhanced liquidity, meaning that investors can move in and out of their investor investments quicker, which is essentially improving the investment experience for the more novice and retail investors. So Welfare Group was actually founded on the basis of our belief, our vision. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to build a legacy for themselves. And I think the Welfare Group is mainly focused on the more high net worth client. So the client that has a net worth of $1 million and above. And is mainly focused on creating investment products around real estate related industries and assets as well as doing the full asset management, providing corporate and financial services, essentially building up to that client's legacy over time. When you look at PropChain, we're more or less targeting the technological side of the real estate market. We are building an on-chain PropTech ecosystem where we are mainly focused on creating digital assets and the underlying technology that is needed to issue digital assets and to actually manage them. So that's the main difference between the two. And there's also a strong collaboration between those two ventures. PropChain facilitates a whole lot of technology for, for example, the investment products that we create within the welfare group. Home ownership is becoming increasingly difficult in the UAE region. There's a, a high entry barrier, I would say. And with the solutions that we built, we're trying to bring that down. One of our solutions is, for example, a rent-to-own based model where people can build equity in the houses that they are renting, that they are living in. And at the same time, we're also bringing a piece of Dubai to the rest of the world. And what that actually means is that we sell fractions of Dubai based real estate assets to a global investor base where they can start investing from just thousand euro onwards. That helps them to actually get an opportunity to be in the market here without having to migrate to the UAE yet and without having to push uh, you know, quite significant amounts of money here in an unfamiliar market to them. Essentially, the technological infrastructure that we have built with PropChain allows us to issue digital tokens, so what they call security tokens, that we put on the blockchain and that represent a fraction of a real estate asset here in the UAE. We actually do that on a global scale, but focused here on the UAE market as per the success that the real estate market and currently has here. And the, the, the supply and demand that still makes a lot of sense when you look at the number of residents currently um, migrating to the UAE. And I think that the blockchain element really improves um, a lot. It improves the security, it, it improves the transparency, but at the same time it also allows us to actually make fractions of real estate assets tradable, which is obviously again uh, improving the liquidity of people, their investments into this market. Yeah, I think that when you are a disruptor in a certain market, especially in a very traditional market like real estate, you always face the challenges of disbelief. Uh, it's a very traditional market that doesn't like change too much, although we have seen that PropTech is making its way up. Uh, so that was definitely one of the challenges we faced. Um, we needed to put our money where our mouth is and also show the results to the market, which we have successfully done at this point. Uh, at the same time, we have also faced quite significant regulatory challenges uh, because of the new technology, the new way of processing um, former traditional uh, processes that were in place uh, is actually providing regulators with new hurdles to provide you with an underlying regulatory framework that is providing you with the opportunity to operate. And that was a big challenge for us. Um, we have found our way. It's also one of the reasons why we like to focus now on the UAE market because we see that regulators in general here are way more open to collaboration and to um, yeah, sandbox-alike environments where we can actually thrive in. So that's uh, 
and it's really good to see. Yeah, I think the milestones now are quite uh, significant already. I mean, the, the partnerships that we're making, uh, the number of users that we have on our waiting list, uh, the actual public um, uh, market launches that we're planning to, uh, to head into for Q4 this year uh, are definitely significant milestones. Um, I believe that next year we will see even more of that. We have uh, significant plans to capture market share here, uh, both with our rent-to-own models as well as the uh, models of uh, fractionalized investment. So uh, by next year we hope to hit a 25,000 user number uh, on the platform, uh, which is our base layer minimum. So that's uh, definitely a milestone we're aiming for. And furthermore, it's constant development. Uh, the client is, uh, is, is always king with us and we are trying to make his or her experience as, uh, as positive and convenient as possible. So that will be a major milestone for us as well to maintain the customer satisfaction level that we are having right now. For the UAE region, I think that obviously here we have kind of the most popularity right now. We're definitely also looking at Saudi Arabia because of the current exposure that we're getting with the mega projects that are being developed there. So we are definitely looking to see if we can make our way in there too and we have quite significant traction on that end. At the same time I believe that our business models are actually quite interesting for any market uh, where we see sky high real estate prices but where we are not too overvalued yet. Uh, a good example is Singapore for example which is a market of interest to us but also in Europe there's an increased problem of, uh, of, of gaining primary home ownership meaning that some of our verticals there on the prop chain will do really well too. So we're definitely keeping an open, uh, open vision to expanding further, uh, but we also really uh, are aware of the fact that focus right now is key. So uh, Dubai is, uh, is our main uh, area of focus for the next year.